Hello friends! Welcome to my YouTube channel and my first studio art vlog. My name is Eliza Dumas and I'm an illustrator and artist from the New York, New Jersey area. My art handle on Instagram is at Eliza Doodles with two U's if you want to go check it out. And thank you so much for being here and for your support. I've really wanted to make a YouTube channel and platform like this for a while now, and I'm really excited it's finally happening. And I'm very excited to hang out with you today. Hope you're having a good day. And once again, I really can't thank you enough for being here. So thank you, and let's hop right into the video. <laughs> now, let me introduce this little segment called Arts and Chats with Eliza where I, your host Eliza, will chat about life and fun topics while you either watch me make art or you can make art with me. Always feel free to crack out a sketchbook or anything creative during this. It's like we're hanging out and making art together. Anyway, let's jump into today's topic. So today we're going to be talking about New Year's resolutions, yay! <laughs> now, I know, I know, uh, just just hear me out, please. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the good parts of New Year's resolutions, and then I'll discuss the bad parts in a later part of this video. But I don't know if anyone else feels like this, but personally, I feel bad if I don't make some kind of New Year's resolution because I would hate to waste an opportunity to make my life a little bit better. And that's what I think New Year's resolutions are all about, just making your life a little bit better. Making small efforts to make a small change to make your life just a little bit happier. I mean, you don't have to, for example, conquer the world or run a marathon, but you could maybe drink more water or make more of an effort to go outside and spend less time on your phone. It's different for each person, and this year I have a couple of lifestyle resolutions, but I also have some art and sketchbook resolutions as well. for the new year for my art is to draw more people. Um, I really struggle with drawing anatomy <laughs> and I think that's because I've never actually taken an art class. I've only tried to teach myself so it's been a little bit more difficult. I think uh, getting into figure drawing would be nice and um, another thing I'd like to do more is landscapes. I haven't had um, much experience with landscapes or drawing, I mean, even like houses. So I'd like to get more comfortable with that. And lastly, animals that aren't cats. I mean, I'm not going to stop drawing cats. I just think I draw too many cats. I mean, well, I don't know. I don't think you can ever draw too many cats, but I only draw cats. So we're going to we're going to change that up. Maybe maybe add a rogue capybara in there or something, you know. Um uh my second goal is I want to get more comfortable with uh some different mediums, specifically gouache paints and Prismacolor pencils because I tend to do this thing where I get really, really comfortable with one medium, specifically Posca markers, and I don't really touch anything else because I'm like, ooh, this is great, um, I love my art when I make this, and I know how to do it really well, and I'm just going to stay inside my little comfort circle, and I want to not do that this year. Um, and lastly, my... Last goal is to just allow myself to exist 
and create, you know, because I feel like my sketchbook so far has been so painfully perfectionistic where I try to make every single page look like a work of art whereas a sketchbook is supposed to be for sketching it's in the title you know it's supposed to be where mistakes happen and I want to start doing that more and let go of the need for my sketchbook to look perfect So, um, today I went to Barnes & Noble to try to find an agenda, specifically a lectern brand. Leuchtturm. Hi y'all, it's me from editing, and I just found out that the brand is actually called Leuchtturm and not Lecturm. And yeah, I'm a little embarrassed, so please just ignore every time I say Lecturm. <laughs> Thanks. Agenda, because I've always wanted to try out some of their products and I thought, you know, why not this year? But I went to get a new 2022 agenda because long, long story short, I had one last year and I didn't use it at all. And my life was sort of chaotic. And I don't think that's a coincidence because I didn't really have anything to organize my life or my time or anything. So. I figure why not try to be more organized this year and in an effort to do that I'm going to paint my cutest little chonky kitty Bob Stookey Bob Stookey <laughs> on my agenda because I know myself and I know if I spend the time painting the agenda I'm not gonna not use it you know what I mean so I'm sort of tricking myself into being organized this year and now we're going to segue into part two of Arts and Chats with Eliza, where we're going to talk about the not so great things about New Year's resolutions. And you'll watch me paint my cute little kitty. I drew Bob as a strawberry here. And yeah, let's get into it. The first issue I have with New Year's resolutions is that immediately there's a lot of pressure to create, share, and complete um, a bunch of New Year's resolutions, which seems very overwhelming. And along with that comes even more pressure to suddenly be extremely motivated all the time to achieve these goals. I feel that it's unrealistic and unfair to people to expect them to make all these immense changes and be extremely motivated just because it's a new time of the year. And along with that, I also feel like it shames people who don't want to make any New Year's resolutions, which is horrible. And listen, if you're someone who's extremely motivated and gets really excited about New Year's resolutions, I'm not trying to make you feel bad because I, I see both sides of the coin. I see why New Year's resolutions are good and bad at the same time, so don't let me stop you. I'm just here to say that if you're someone who doesn't really believe in New Year's resolutions and you don't really care about them, nor have any intention of participating in it, that's 100% okay. And if you are someone who wants to complete some New Year's resolutions and strive for your goals, that's also okay. They're both great options. Basically, what I'm trying to say is if you don't care about New Year's resolutions, don't feel bad. You don't have to all of a sudden be motivated because it's a new year. You're great the way you are. You're doing great, and I don't know if anyone's told you this today, but I'm proud of you and you're really cool. <laughs> and um, for the people who do care about New Year's resolutions, I just want to say that's also great. 
I'm proud of you for reaching for your goals and working towards them. But I'm also going to say, remember to be gentle with yourself. And remember that achieving goals, it's not, it's not linear. Nothing, nothing's linear. But just remember that you're human and you're going to make mistakes. And those mistakes are going to be beautiful because it's part of the process of you growing. So handle them with grace and just remember to always be gentle with yourself and handle those challenges with love and try not to lose sight of what you initially wanted. Because if you stick with it and you truly believe in yourself, I believe in you that you'll get there and you'll accomplish what you want. Hello and welcome back to my cozy little squishy corner. I call this my squishy corner because of all of my squishy squishmallow friends. Well, not all of, all of them are squishmallows. Uh, this is my new new friend. He's a jelly cat. This is Roly Poly Ant Eater. Um, great friend. Love this. Love this little. I was just gonna say human being, but that that makes absolutely no sense this uh, this little guy. <laughs> now I'm gonna be doing a little mini art haul for you all. I picked up a couple new um, pens and some art supplies and I really wanted to share it with you all so let's hop right into it. Uh, so the first thing I got uh, is a new pack of Posca markers. I originally found these in I think, October of 2020 and I've been using the same pack since then and they just dried out on me and I was like, well, I mean, they lasted a really long time and uh, these are by far my favorite medium to use. 
If you like paint markers and haven't tried these out, I would highly suggest them. I know they're really popular, so um, yeah, I got them in these six colors. Uh, the pink one is missing because I was using it earlier. And uh, a black and a white one because I've never tried these out before, so I'm very excited to try some layering with these. See how that turns out. The next item I picked up is a pack of these Muji pens. They're the gel ink ballpoint pen type 0.38 black. And these are some of my favorite pens to use just for doodling. I usually keep one of these on me wherever I go, whether it's, you know, in my purse or backpack. I really like... I... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I really enjoy the consistency of the gel pen. The only thing is, um, I tend to finish a lot of my projects with Mod Podge and this leads with Mod Podge on top of it so I wouldn't use this on anything you're planning on finishing with Mod Podge. I'm not gonna say any other you know um, sealers because I haven't tried anything else so but definitely with Mod Podge. Anyway the next thing I picked up were uh, two pens are uh, these Pentel pens in orange and red and I love these pens. I uh, found out about them a couple months ago in October when I met uh, these two really cool artists and one of them was drawing with it on their sketchbook and I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? And I fell in love with it right away because the exterior was sparkly and um, it's just really fun to draw with. It has a flexible um, pen tip so it gives like a different style depending on how much pressure you put on it. And it's it's really pretty I love the colors um, I really wanted to pick up an olive green one but they didn't sell it individually they only sold a couple um, colors individually so I ended up picking up these two but I love them and I'm definitely not disappointed and I am definitely going to pick up an olive green color and possibly a dark blue and they have this really pretty lilac purple so yeah very happy to add these to my collection of pens. Next thing I got is this little travel uh, paint tin. And so I filled this with gouache. Uh, it's been used a little bit, as you can see, I got real excited. But um, I got this because I'm gonna be traveling soon and um, one of my New Year's resolutions is to get more comfortable with gouache paint, so I was like, well, why not bring it and then, you know, this will be one of the only things I have where I am, so it sort of, you know, forces me to use what I have, which I'm excited about. Also, I uh, got this idea from this artist on Instagram. Her handle is Erica Beeswax, and she got the exact same tin. She used different, um, paints but I fell in love with the idea and it was so convenient. Yeah, go check out her page, she has some really cool art. And by the way, I got this, um, the Pentel pens, the Muji pens, and the Posca markers all from Amazon. Uh, my last item that I'm going to be talking about right now I got from Blick. I wasn't able to go to the store itself because it was all the way in New York. So I ended up ordering it online instead and it uh, came in and here it is. It's the most beautiful olive green color and it's so soft and the pages are this really nice um, acid free paper and it's not white, it's like this cream and I almost, I prefer to draw on paper that's not so just bright white because sometimes it might sound ridiculous but it kind of hurts my eyes looking at it for a while and I, I just prefer prefer <laughs> prefer prefer the more muted tone and I put um, one of my own stickers on the front of it so funny story I initially labeled this little dude as a uh, cloud boy cloud friend and uh, at a tabling event I was at a couple months ago, someone came up and they were like, oh my gosh, I love, I love this little broccoli guy. And I was like, 
Oh yeah, broccoli guy. <laughs> and then so I did a Instagram poll of does this look more like a cloud or more like broccoli? And it was sort of like, you know, it's, you know, in a, when a poll ends up being 50-50, so it doesn't really help you anyway. Well, that's what happened. So uh, now, now I call this friend uh, broccoli cloud friend because it could be both. I think it's more of a cloud, but broccoli cloud friend. I, uh, lastly, I found out about this brand of sketchbooks, um, which is, by the way, it's a speedball handbook. <laughs> I should have said that. It's a speedball handbook. And I actually found out about this sketchbook from my favorite artist. Her name is uh, Radia, and her handle on um, Instagram is Knives Meow, and she has an awesome YouTube channel, and I saw her um, sketchbook tour video and I saw this sketchbook and I was like whatever sketchbook I get next it's gonna be that color I love it so much she is a huge reason why I'm even starting this channel and is a huge inspiration to me I love her work so much and like she's just gotten so successful and deserves everything great that's happened so yeehaw this concludes my mini art haul if you have any other questions, you can comment down below if I left anything out. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I know this is um, only the first video, but um, I have a couple more planned and even more after that. And I'd like to make this platform somewhere where we can just, you know, hang out and chill and it can be a really low-key creative space and you know somewhere you can just come to hang out and be comfortable if you liked this video feel free to leave it a like and subscribe if you want to see more thanks again for watching i hope you're having a really good week and stay safe and i'll see you soon bye